All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, today's session, we are talking about uh, two of the biggest features within ARM that I think really are going to be uh, very useful for anyone using ARM mobile. So we're kind of tying this together. We really are just training on ARM features, uh, but kind of trying to tie that in with our last session uh, that we did last week, which was the, the ARM mobile application that is brand new and we're excited about. So uh, kind of wanted to, to tie those in here. And so we're going to talk about uh, favorites or formerly known as personalists in ARM. Um, and really trying to draw attention to what those can, can do for you, uh, as well as standard evaluations. That'll be kind of the bulk of our time, from a time perspective at least, uh, talking about those. And then we'll just, just have a few callbacks to why those will matter uh, with AR Mobile, which I think we did last session as well when we were showing the application. Um, so hopefully there's just a little crossover there to see the importance of them. Um, but they'll definitely be important either either way we do it. So, all right, with that, I'm going to start here. I've got just a couple of slides to complement our uh, our discussion today. And really, I want to just dive right into uh, standard evaluations. So an, an SE for short is kind of the abbreviation. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, uh, it's really a, a file that you'll create that saves the description, the header description for an assessment. And as the name would imply, the, the goal is to standardize how you describe a particular rating that is being performed. And so we'll see uh, as we uh, work through creating and looking at these files, um, that really th the three main components for an SE, uh, you first choose the columns that you want to encapsulate and save. So you can have just a single, single assessment column, or if you have a logical grouping, uh, there's these three things that I do when I go to take this type of assessment for this type of trial. Uh, you can have uh, you know, as many columns, you know, three columns, four columns, 10 columns, if you like, however many logically would be bundled together uh, into a, a single uh, file, a single SE. So we'll select the columns um, uh, to, to use then we get to choose specifically what rows uh, from that description we want to save. So we don't necessarily have to take everything that you would see on the screen, uh, but you can be selective. Say these are the components that are the same for every time I do this. So for example, something like the rating date. Well, of course that will never be the same. Each day I go out, it's a different date. So you would not select that as part of your standardization file, but that something like the part rated and the rating type in your rating unit, those really are kind of that core part of the description of what it is you did. And so you'd want to, to choose what, what matters and what doesn't essentially um, when we create that SE. And then finally, uh, the, the last component is study rules. So if you have any study rules that are linked to that column that you have, those can also be included in the SE. So that can be really powerful on that protocol writing side, um, especially uh, to be able to put in any rules and requirements that would come with that assessment and to be able to have that those same things being implemented each time that that assessment is performed. So those will come with kind of automatically. You, you uh, wouldn't necessarily select particular rules, uh, but ARM kind of notifies you that, hey, these rules are all um, linked to that column that you're trying to export. So those can come with. So 
So kind of setting the stage before we I'll go over to ARM and kind of show the SEs is, you know, why, why, would, why does this matter? Why, why are we training on this? And um, for, for protocol writers, uh, of course, it's in the name standardize, uh, really wanting to be able to standardize how those assessments are described um, across all of the different trialists and even across your, your company. If you have a group of you that are protocol writers, um, collectively, uh, you can leverage SEs so that everyone in that group is describing things the same in all of the different protocols, which then trickle down to all of your trials uh, that are being run. Uh, so it really, it really can expand that consistency um, across across all those different ranges. Uh, kind of taking that idea, just the base idea. Of, of a protocol and how that standardizes all of the trials from the protocol, let's take that one level up and really expand that. And we can do that with the standard evaluation. And then of course, one of the biggest reasons for that standardization then is when you get all that data back and being able to do a multi-trial analysis. Um, if anyone's ever used the ST, the summary across trials add-in, um, or really any other software to combine trials, uh, you learn very quickly um, how valuable standardization is, uh, trying to, to combine the same assessment described differently can be quite, quite the headache. So having that standard and consistent description is, is really invaluable for, for that. And then from a trialist perspective, um, uh, you can really, the SEs are an automation of sorts that now you're not having to hand type um, or copy paste that description that was filled in before. Instead, uh, you just load that file and boom, it's all filled in for you automatically. So a time saver. Um, and if you are uh, you know, uh, just a trialist, uh, thinking of your, your business and, and how you're sending and creating those trials to send, send back to the, the sponsors, uh, you're creating more value for those trials. Uh, if your your trials are consistent, then they are they're more valuable. So that can be a, a good good reason to to give this a go. Uh, and then of course um, we've got AR and Mobile, and when we showed that a little bit uh, last time when we were demonstrating the app and how you can create new assessment columns um, kind of on the fly. So if you get to the field and you have to do this rating that you maybe didn't plan for. Um, just with a couple of, of presses, you can create new assessments. And of course, leveraging an SE, now even in the field with AR and Mobile, you're creating uh, and, and extending that consistency. So you can take those assessments and have the exact same description as you did in the office uh, the first time around when you filled in those headers. So that's uh, really the name of the game will be, be consistency and what all, what all comes of it. So let's dive into ARM and kind of kind of see these in action. Um, I am just going to create a new protocol. Start brand new and fresh here. And so there's there's a few few ways to approach SEs. Um, uh, to be honest, it's a little challenging to to decide uh, when setting up a, a training like this uh, which direction to take. There's a lot of different ways to to leverage and use SEs. Um, and so we'll tr I'll try to kind of compartmentalize some of the different approaches. Um, and hopefully just kind of showing the full gamut of what's possible, you can find the, the set of steps uh, that would maybe fit you best. Um, there's, there's really di different ways to, to do this and get to that same result of, of consistency. Um, but maybe the, the quickest route to, to getting going uh, would be if you have ever used the SE definitions section, um, it's in the protocol description and in a trial, it's also in the site description with the same name. Here in the SE name row, we actually have a list here. 
And if we go to the display all, we have a master list of SEs available in, in every ARM. So if you've, if you've you know, never uh, used SEs or have, haven't put a lot of thought and thinking, boy, I don't even know where I would begin, this can be a great place to start. Um, and so there is a, a large number of SEs. Uh, one of the uh, one of the the global sponsors that had had a whole library of SEs they were using um, allowed us to to share and, and bring those all into this master list so that everyone has access to to those. And so uh, each one of these rows in this table is a different SE. And to visualize that a little bit. We have a preview on the right. And this just shows those components of the assessment header that were saved at that point in time when this SE was created. And so uh, leveraging the SE name, of course, is, is just the, the name of that file. Uh, they kind of had a, a coding system uh, with the, the letter being, I think, kind of the discipline of the type of study and then just kind of an arbitrary number uh, throughout. I think the, the greatest value here in this list would be the SE description. This kind of tells you what it really is for. And so if, if you're wanting to begin with, well, you know, what should I even use for, for a, a count of, of larva or something like that, uh, really start with that SE description and uh, you can either right click in that column and do a filter for, or you can do the same filter for if you just click into this filtering box down below. Either one will get you to the same thing. Um, and really it's just a search uh, to provide a keyword uh, across that SE description. So if I search for the word count, this will filter that, that very large list down to something that's a little more useful, I would say, a little easier to, to manage. So you can see um, with count, of course, there's still quite a few of them, but at least we've narrowed it down a little bit. And then we do have the other columns for some other components of that header. So if you did know, um, you know, the part rated being, being larva, that's a good one. Uh, you know, in the example I just said, you could filter by larva. And now we'll filter this list for anything that contains the word count in the description, and then also anything that has specifically the larva in it. So this can be a good way uh, to just get started with an SE without trying to have to start creating um, them from, from scratch, if you will. Uh, just to be able to see uh, and maybe leverage some of these standard descriptions. And you can see if I just click through this list, the preview on the right will update to see what it was that was, was chosen. And so maybe this last one looks good. That's the one, oops, uh, that, that we would like to use. Scrolling is doing something weird here. Uh, then we can click OK to select that. SE. So that's the same. It really is an SE file. And we'll, we'll kind of show how to create one of your own later. But that's really an SE file that's just been kind of embedded in with ARM. So anyone and everyone can use it. And here on the SE definitions section, uh, really what we're doing is selecting files that would apply to this particular protocol. And then we'll apply to all of the trials that we create from the protocol. So this is a, a repeating section, just like you know, application codes or um, weather information. Uh, let me open my properties here so I can always insert another one. Uh, so if I wanted to find several different types of assessments uh, that I'll perform, uh, you can just go right back to that SE name and find our, our master list here of all the SEs. And I'm just, I'm just gonna pick a random one. Maybe the percent disease looks good. Um, you can actually select more than one if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna hold the control button down on my keyboard and then that'll allow me to select more than one. 
If I do that, it'll load multiple of them here. So this, this SE definitions here, we've chosen three SE files to be the, the types of assessments we plan to perform in trials from this protocol. Uh, to kind of show how these will actually exist, if I go to the assessment data, we can actually utilize those SEs uh, to create assessment columns um, with that standard description that we have. And so to do that, you can go to the SE name and that validation list, it loaded automatically when I clicked in, or if you click this button, it'll also pop up. It will provide us the list, but it's not that master list of all SEs that are possible. It only shows those we've selected in the SE definitions section. So from the protocol writing standpoint, this is a great way to direct and, and simplify the selection for the try list to say, all right, I've already went through the list uh, or I've created my own and these are the evaluations and these are the descriptions you should use. So it makes, makes the trialist job easier across all the different trialists. Now they won't be picking a bunch of random ones that don't line up. Um, instead, everyone will have that same short, simple list to, to choose from. And again, they'll still have that preview so they can see what they're getting into um, if they choose to load and use that SE. So here, if I select our larva count and say, okay, that will load that SE. And essentially it's, it's pretty much a copy paste uh, is, is kind of what, what it amounts to uh, where we had that, those components, see if there's anything else, um, hidden fields with information yet. We also had that calculation field. Um, so again, th this information had been filled in at some point in somebody's trial somewhere and said, this is the standard way we want to describe when we go and, and count larvae. And so they had saved that as an SE and now we are using that description. And so essentially kind of copying from that other trial in, into this protocol. I really like that analogy because I think that's what you know, probably, you know, 75% of assessment columns and all of ARMs probably, you know, originate from copying from a previous column. You know, if, if we were in a trial and this was an assessment we did last week and now seven days later, we need to go out again, then most likely what somebody is gonna do is they're not gonna hand type or look in the list to fill in the details again. They're going to select the column, press copy and come to the next column, you know, the next open column and, and paste and then adjust the date and adjust whatever details uh, that they want. That's, that's really kind of that same idea is what we're trying to accomplish with an SE, but being able to save that to a file, it lets, you know, it allows that description to live outside of just whatever ARM window you have open. So now instead of having to have um, you know, this protocol open when I want to do that same description in my next protocol or same thing for trials. Okay, I did, did a trial last week where I did the larva count. Now I have to open that one up and open this one up and do a copy paste uh, to have that same description. Instead, you fill it in once and create a, a file that can then be called and used again and again. And you're basically just pasting again and again in your trials, in all of your different protocols you're, you're uh, creating, then that you can have each trialist be performing that same paste um, by using that SE again and again. So I think that's, that's really the power of, of an SE and, 
Uh, so we'll, we'll kind of show all these tools and, and functionality to uh, really, um, really beat it to death of, of all the, the different possibilities. But at the very core, um, just imagine it as a, a, a powerful copy paste uh, that can extend across files and, and across computers. You can share that SE file can go um, to, to other computers then and have that same copy and paste as well. <clears throat> That's re really all we're doing when you, when you create an SE, you're kind of performing that copy half. What is it I want to copy? And then every time that you load an SE, then you're really doing the paste. <clears throat> so, so far we showed the SE definitions um, and we leveraged the master list that was in the SE name um, to be able to use kind of that library of SEs that have already been created for us. Well, if you, if you don't quite find what you want, um, or maybe you already have a pretty good grip, you know, well, my group's been working hard on, on being consistent already. Um, so we really don't want to start from square one and start picking from this list. Um, then you can create your own files. There's no reason you'd have to use that list. And so really a, a best practice would be, um, you know, open up last year's trial. Or if you want, we could, since we're in a protocol right now, we could use the merge. If you've never used the, the merge before, that's under the tools menu. That's really a, a copy from another study into the study we have currently open. So if I do that real quickly, it'll bring up my study list to say, let's find last year's trial. In this case, it's a, it, I'm in a protocol. So it's looking for a protocol. Um, maybe I'll cheat and open up my tutorial study list. We'll just grab some sort of protocol here. I'll make sure that they have assessment columns, um, columns here. So at least we've got 13. I'll take this one since it's shorter. This one's got just three assessment columns. So grab, grab last year's protocol, last year's trial, if you're in a trial, and the merge will let us add the assessment data headers. So this will just copy all of the headers we had in that previous file into the one we're looking at right now. It looks like we got some headers and there's also a, a study rule. I'll just close that for the moment. Let's just delete these two assessment columns. We really don't, really don't need our larva count at the moment. <clears throat> so either, either in last year's file or use the merge to bring it in here. Now we have that nice list of what we had done last year and we feel great about this. This is the way we want to describe um, those types of assessments moving forward. So to create your own SE file, just right click anywhere in the, the column that you want to do, and we will export an SE. So th this list will look familiar because it matches our components that we had done before. Uh, which assessment column numbers do we, we want? Now this kind of comes up to your, your strategy of, of how uh, maybe you would kind of mentally organize your assessments. Uh, you know, here it looks like we've got um, a, a plant count and a percent control. Maybe those two, we do those two uh, together at the same day and we do that every three days um, in the middle of the season then it would be logical to maybe put those two in that same standard evaluation. Or maybe those could, we, you know, those two can just depending on the schedule and when things happen, um, they really are separate. Uh, you, can, you can kind of customize that um, and choose how many assessment columns are involved in this one SE. So I think I'll choose these two. We'll say they're kind of a pair, they get done together uh, quite often. Um, so we'll have an example with a multi-column. 
Now here is that prompting about the study rules. So um, we saw we had a requirement to fill in the rating date when assessment data is present. A pretty, pretty obvious study rule there. Um, so we can choose to, do we wanna have this rule with, um, with us in that SE? I'm gonna say, yes, that's a great idea. When, when would I not want a rating date? And then the last component is the rows from the header that we want to bring with. And it's kind of remembering my last selection. So let me press clear. And so we can see uh, Aram kind of sets the view here to be kind of the most common ones you would at least consider. So uh, again, a little bit of strategy can come into play as to really what you want to accomplish with this SE. In this case, I've got my Palmer Amaranth um, pest entered. Well, does it make sense that I would always have that particular pest? Um, is that part of this standard evaluation? Maybe for a weed, I want to say, well, no, it might be any type of weed, whatever happens to be present in that plot, I'm going to need to assess. So I don't want to include that. Um, but I would want to include kind of that, those, these are kind of the core descriptions of an assessment anyway, your, your part rated, rating type and rating unit, and, and maybe subsamples, even though they're both one. Um, but in other cases, uh, maybe, maybe you would, you know, maybe if it's more of a, you know, a, a phytotoxicity on the crop and you say, well, um, we only deal with, with two different types of crops. So maybe I'll just make an SE for, for maize and an SE for soybeans. Here in South Dakota, those are about the only two that, that we see around here. Um, so again, it, it really just depends on, on your situation and your research, what makes the most sense. Um, but again, it's, it's what, what would be the same every time I perform this assessment is, is really the question we would ask at this point when we're creating it. What do I want to include uh, as part of this um, SE. So we'll choose uh, just those rows here and leave out that pest. So that way we have flexibility. Um, I could include just the weed selection since I'll, I'll always be dealing with the weed. And then when I load it, I'll be able to just select the pest code. Maybe that's one way to, to do that. So those are the components of an SE. That's kind of the, the, the process ARM will go through to ask and, and allow us to build that. And so now we are prompted to give this SE a name and really save it to a file. So I, I like to try to be descriptive with the name. So that way, you know, just looking at some of the other SEs I've got on, on my computer already, trying to be descriptive of what it what it does. Here, obviously, I didn't follow that rule entirely. These don't tell me anything about what's in the SE. Uh, so being descriptive for um, kind of the goal of this SE then tells you and everyone else um, that might be using that SE what, what it is. So in my case, you know, it was, um, maybe it was something with weed um, evals, whatever the phrase you'd use of, oh, those are the things we have to do uh, to go counting, counting weeds. Um, give that a name. And we also have a description. So a little bit longer, you, you know, it can be a little more verbose. Um, in this case, maybe I would say that it would be a weed, you know, the stand count plus, plus the control rating, whatever you'd wanna say. I can be a little closer to a sentence than kind of a, a condensed file name per se. Now that creates this file on my computer that now we can use again and again. So as our example specifically here, we said, okay, we're gonna perform that and then the next week we'll go out and do the same thing. I can insert an SE from file. 
So to be able to go out and find an SE that's on my computer, I can load that from file and there it is. Since I'm sorted by date modified, right there is the one we just created. And if I open that, we can see, and it's just like copy and pasting columns one and two, except now we don't have that weed selected. So maybe this is the second weed that we encountered on the first day. And so uh, then we can fill in our pest code and whatever other details. We were able to be really specific about um, what we copied and what we didn't. And a great question about that SE file. Um, it is just sitting here on my computer. How about this, this magic folder, this GDM def. Uh, if you've created report sets or study rule sets or you know anything else you kind of encapsulate within a REM, chances are it ends up here. Uh, and it's, it is very easy to transfer to, a, to another computer. Um, so whether you're working as a group and you want to copy this out to the network uh, or a SharePoint, say, hey, I've created this SE, it's out there. Anyone else can then go out to the, to the SharePoint and copy it onto their computer. Another note from maybe more of that, the uh, sponsor trialist relationship when you load an SE in a protocol, it will actually attach that file to your protocol. So then you, when you send this protocol, if you use the file send to, then ARM can include all of the attachments, which would include the SE files that you have loaded. So now again, if you're that sponsor who wrote this protocol and you're gonna send it to all your trialists, um, use the send to so that SE file is present with the protocol. Now everyone's trials can load and use that same SE as well. So that's another way to transfer it to it to another computer. So great, great question. That that's really kind of uh, adding the other layer for for power to get that to everyone in the group. Um, or get it to all of your trialists um, to be able to, to spread that file. It's, it's a really, really small little uh, stub of a file, um, seven kilobytes. So, so or that's even my full list. Just that SE itself was, was one kilobyte. So you can, you can make as many as you want and never have to worry about file sizes or anything like that. But to visualize here what, what we did when we loaded that SE, of course, we have that description. We brought in two new data columns. You can see here the SE name matches the file name that we created um, or that we used to save the file. And then the SE description was that description we typed in. You can go kind of another layer to that if you'd like. Um, in my case, you know, I had two different columns. And so it might be less than ideal to have the same name and description uh, for each of these. Uh, so you certainly, before you create the SE, if we go back to our original column here, um, if you wanted to have a separate name and or description, for these two columns, um, you can fill that in first and have that included in the SE. So again, just, just some extra options. Um, you can kind of play around with that to, to kind of visualize what I mean. I, I kind of don't want to create too many versions of the SEs and get things too tangled up. But if you're just finding yourself a little limited by the way that functions, just know that there is um, that capability uh, to have more flexibility in, in the name and description. And then the other thing to point out uh, is the study rule. So that rating date study rule was part of the assessment column. Um, so when we loaded four and five, they were included. Uh, that, that study rule then was applied to those columns as well. So we get a really, really great benefit for that protocol writing side 
uh, to be able to include not not just standardize what is filled, you know, the, the contents that's filled in, but standardize what the trial list should fill in um, as well. Um, if you're requiring certain information to be filled in, uh, that's a great way to make sure those rules get, get put in. Even for new columns that get created, every time they load that SE, not only will the information um, be come across, but those rules uh, as well can be brought with. So while we're on the topic of the SE description, um, and, and this is, is maybe wider than just dealing with an SE name, I learned something new with the the uh, as we were working on the ARM mobile and deciding you know which which rows and uh, which you know pieces of this header would make sense to be on the mobile app because of course we can't have all of them uh, we we have a very small screen size um, so so looking through the, the different fields and we realized that um, we've been training wrong. And I think a lot of people, whether it's through our training or just the way that the screen was set up, kind of lent itself uh, to this. So there is a description row in the header. And actually I've got those filled in here even in my example. Um, and so commonly that is used as kind of an open text uh, description, kind of a human readable version of, you know, these rows, essentially. Uh, it's a lot easier just to refer to a stand count or a percent control uh, than it is to talk about, you know, the, all the selections uh, that you made down farther. So that's great. That's, that's really handy to use. It can also be used uh, to put in codes if you're looking for, you know, in an ST and combining columns, things like that. The only trouble is that this description row is actually supposed to be part of the crop information. So for a moment, I'm going to change my view to all fields so we can see every single row uh, that's possible in the header. And so it starts with kind of the pest code and, and all of the details with your pest selection. And then we have the crop selection. And that includes a crop variety and what's supposed to be the crop description. So, so just kind of, I think a little bit of an error in how we um, laid out, you know, laid things out. Um, that description just hung very nicely right next to the part rated and the rating type. So it kind of looked like the place to put a description of the assessment. So long story short, I've been telling people wrong for years. <laughs> Um, and really, instead of putting that description in the description row, you want to put it in the SE description row. And I think that's the other factor that throws people off, is that makes it seem like you really should only be using this if you're going to create an SE. That's really not what it's necessarily designed for. Certainly, if you're using SEs, it's handy. Uh, but there's no reason that this isn't just your evaluation description. And for, for that matter, you could give it an evaluation name. Um, there's really no reason that uh, even if you never create, never load an SE, that you'd have to use, you know, that, that you can't use this information. So stepping off my soapbox for a moment, um, just to, to point out, trying to try and encourage people to transfer away from that description. So you'll see in uh, ARAM Mobile, it uses the SE description. If, if you load in a trial and go, wait a minute, there's no description here. It's using SE description and not the, I'll call it the regular, the incorrect, the crop description. Old habits die hard, I'm sure. Um, for the time being, what I would say is I would just select this row. I'm just clicking on the description heading there and, and do a copy and paste. I mean, that would be simplest. Um, 
and I'm going to overwrite those. So that's going to make a mess. But at any rate, um, copy and paste to get this description information into the SE description. And it pasted into my name, but I think probably because I had some of this, the SE is already loaded. So that kind of made a mess. Um, that's just kind of one important detail that uh, uh, yeah, our, our jaws kind of dropped as we were, we had the programmers look up kind of kind of the origin of when these got added. We're like, yeah, I've been telling people wrong this whole time. That's great. <laughs> so. But another quick tie in uh, just real briefly for the ARM mobile. Um, I mentioned it, it uses the SE description instead of the description. Uh, if, if you're curious what exactly does make it into ARM mobile, um, we actually created some default views. So over here on the right, this controls which rows we see. And so we have a couple related to ARM Mobile. So you can see the, this ARM Mobile uh, default view will be uh, really the list of everything that um, is copied with that trial definition. So if I had all of this, you know, etched out and I'm ready to export this to take the data actually in the mobile app, these rows specifically are what gets copied, are what part of, you know, are the really that trial definition. Anything else that we don't see on the screen right this moment is um, not going to be copied into the app. That doesn't mean that it won't still be here when the data comes back in. It's just a matter of we won't be able to see those details in the app. And then the Air and Mobile SE um, is the fields that are loaded when you load an SE within Air and Mobile. It's a little bit narrower view. So if you're thinking about, I'm really going to create SEs specifically to implement with Air and Mobile. You know, this is kind of your, your bare minimum. This is this would be your main target um, of what will be used. Going back to all fields, you can see, of course, we've got a whole host of, of things uh, that will get filled in uh, if, if you, you know, for, for whatever you're, you're using. All right, I've kind of got a mess here, so I'm just going to delete all of these columns. Otherwise, I invariably end up with some crazy error message or something. I still didn't delete them all here. Let me just delete data column. I ended up with a bunch of them. Okay. Here we go. And once more, let's just insert that SE. Now I inserted that SE from file because that was a file that we had created. Um, I did that here on the editor and that's certainly kind of a one by one um, approach you can take. Uh, but you'll notice when we do that, it does tie into that SE definitions. So again, multiple ways to, to accomplish the same thing. Um, but it actually did add that weed evals SE to my SE definitions for this particular protocol. And it'll also add that to my favorites list or my personal list of SEs that I've, I've created or have marked as a favorite from the master list. We'll talk more about, about those lists in general. Um, later on, but just to point out that um, this list is what's going to be sent in, into the mobile app. So it'll be a great, great usage, uh, again, for you get out to the field, didn't realize you needed to, to do that, or there's a weed here that, that wasn't here last week, so now I need a whole nother couple of data columns uh, to take data with. Um, having that SE then is real easy in the app, as we saw, just to add, in this case, it'll add two more assessment columns. We put in the weed that, that's present and we're off to the races and, and taking our notes. 
So that's that's really that's the motivation behind um, you know pu pushing these these trainings on on SEs and trying to trying to get the word out on SEs because um, I think it really really enhances uh, the the capabilities uh, the flexibility uh, that AR Mobile can offer. So. Right, I think we covered most of the headlines there. Um, let me go back to my slides. <clears throat> have a, a summary here. We'll see how how many of these we we hit up already. Just kind of tips and tricks, you know, best practices for for getting going um, with with SEs. And um, so the first one is that the SE definitions. Uh, in, in a protocol or a trial, it doesn't have to just be in the protocol that you access that master list. So there's, you know, just to get started, um, that's a great resource to, to find ones that are already created for you. Um, of course, then if you're gonna say, no, we, we've got a good handle on, on how we typically do things, um, then let's let's use what, what you had last year um, or the, if you're mid protocol creating, you can use a protocol you already have, um, have everything already filled in and use that to, to create the SEs. And we talked about this for a bit, that, that SE description is, is really the place to describe the assessment, um, not the you know, extra spot to describe something about the crop. It's essentially what that regular description really is. And then we saw the study rules. So that's kind of a great, I'd say starting to get to a more intermediate or advanced level where, all right, I'm kind of familiar with SEs. Um, I kind of get how they flow. Now, what can I do to, to take this further? Um, that's really where starting to think about bringing study rules into those files. You can really, um, really expand kind of your the capabilities uh, that SEs can offer. So that that about does it for for SEs. Um, about half the time, I feel like I'm making a sales pitch, and, and half of it is is training. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, at least we kind of showed the the gamut of getting getting started with it. As I said, there's there's a lot of functionality uh, that we could could build upon uh, to show uh, how you can implement them even even further. There's there's scheduling you can um, schedule out those SEs and, and you can bring them into the schedule tasks or you can build them out in and, and repeat that that list. Um, so there's there's a lot um, more to, to expand on, but keeping it simple, I think is the biggest thing um, for, for getting started. Kind of the introduction um, is, is to keep it simple while also showing kind of the, the possibilities depending on what direction you go with and and what works best um, for, for your workflow, for your research. Um, it's it's de definitely a challenge to, uh, to, to demonstrate it because there is so many, so many different directions, different types of research where really uh, you'd go a completely different route um, on, on how you'd create them or if it would make sense to use that scheduling and things like that, some research you can't at all. Other ones, yeah, you could at the protocol time, you can pretty much uh, point out exactly when everything's going to happen, uh, just depending on on the the research at hand. So, all right, not not seeing uh, a lot of questions pouring in. I'll uh, transition to the the other component. Um, of our uh, session today and, and really working with uh, personal lists or, or favorites. And, and actually, I borrowed this slide from our um, previous session, and we hadn't quite released this, but now it is out in ARM uh, 2022. 
Uh, so you have, have, if you've been in ARM yet, you've likely seen this change that um, really now, and I'll still call it personalist for probably forever and ever. So, so we'll switch back and forth between the two terms, I'm sure we're um, in, in today's session. But um, what we did call personal lists in ARM, uh, we pretty much just had a facelift, really a rebranding, if you will, uh, to be called favorites. <clears throat> so really just, just to talk about the changes uh, for somebody who's been using ARM before, uh, and all of a sudden this, this looks different, what is going on here? Um, really is just, just rebranding instead of calling it personal lists, having it behave I mean, maybe more of a, of a modern um, way of, of working with, with software, uh, having it being called a favorite. And so um, interface-wise, just try and make it easier to, to use and to notice. Uh, we, we found that um, it wasn't, we were surprised at how many questions we were getting or some of our uh, our beta testers for the for the mobile app, we just kind of assumed, yeah, it uses personal lists, but they'll already be using all of those. So we didn't put a lot of effort into you know talking through the the preparation you might want to do uh, before actually diving into the app. And so we we found that pretty quickly working with those beta testers, um, you know, they're experienced ARM users, and some of them said, oh, I've, I've never used those lists, or the particular ones that we were dealing with, they hadn't really thought about. So um, kind of occurred to us that, yeah, it, it, it might be a little bit more hidden than, than we gave it credit for. So um, we brought the favorites onto the same window as the, the master list. So it's, it's very uh, visual that there is this opportunity when you're looking at the full list of all of your options that, hey, I can create a favorite. I can mark this as one I use a lot. And so that was really the goal. Bring, bring it all in one. There's just a toggle at the top of which list you're looking at. Um, and master list is, is kind of a strange term anyway. So we're just looking at all of them at once or just my list of favorites. Um, and then the, the nice shortcut button that pops up um, when you're on a row to see, it's really, really quick to add that as a favorite. Of course, some of the lists in ARM don't have a, a master to pick from. Uh, they're, they're built um, through, th you know, by the user themselves. Uh, most common one would be the treatment list. Uh, you know, we've got some some dummy, you know, default products, but it's by no means all encompassing. And so it's it's really up to the, the ARM user to populate with the products that they're using. And so we did did some improvements there. Um, of course, there's not a display all in favorites, uh, but we did bring that shortcut button to make it easy to remove an item. So I don't don't want this visible anymore. I don't use that product or whatever make it easy to delete that. Then also brought an edit button uh, to the screen. So you can actually um, have that list itself uh, be switched over to, to edit mode, you know, kind of basically like opening it up in Excel. So now you can click into any cell and adjust a value. Now previously it was kind of clunky. If you wanted to change an existing value, you pretty much just had to um, load it into the trial you're, you're looking at and then delete the old one from your list and then re-add it. I mean, just, just kind of a, a pain really to add. So hopefully that makes, makes it easier to work with those lists. And so great question right along that same thought line with the SEs is can I share lists? So these lists, and one of the reasons they were called personal lists to begin with um, was because they were personal in that they're in on your computer. And so they're saved in the very same folder uh, that we were dealing with with those SEs. So yes, they really can be shared in that same way. And actually, depending on what you mean by share, uh, we have a few other tools available, um, a, a little more sophisticated approaches uh, to sharing your lists, um, as opposed to just you know dropping the file. Here's a, a list file instead of just dropping that on the network. 
um, we have some, some tools, pretty easy to set up um, to be able to sync. So you could actually, uh, within, a, within a group or within a company, have everyone's list be, be synced. And really we pick one, or I call them the data coordinator in the group, kind of the head honcho that has the, the master copy, the one probably that's been using the ARM the longest or something, uh, that, be, that um, is, is the leader of that. And their ARM uh, will copy their lists out to, uh, again, that, that common network drive of some sort. And then everyone else's ARMs can connect to that spot. So um, that way everyone can really be, be working from the same set of lists. So if that, if that would be an interest to your group, uh, just, just contact us. It, it takes just a couple emails back and forth to figure out where that should be and, and who should be the, kind of the leader of sorts. Um, and, and we can get, get you set up with that. Um, or if you're just looking to onboard a new person, you really just want to send it, send it across one time. Um, there's a couple of ways to do that as well. That's kind of a common one I like to like to encourage people to, to do. If someone's brand new, all of their lists are empty. Well, hey, I, you know, I've been using ARM for a while. Uh, you could just start with my, let me just copy my list over onto that other computer. Uh, and that's another uh, simplest way to do that. You can do it uh, just within using the, uh, the migrate tool. Typically you use that to, to move your ARM to a different computer, but you can use that same migration package and just send it to somebody else. And if they load the package, all of their lists um, on their computer just get replaced with your copy. So a few different options, uh, depending on what you're looking for. But that's, that's a, great, a great functionality to really level up um, the ARM use within a group is, is to work through how best to share some of these some of these things so you don't have that duplication of effort um, of everyone kind of doing the same type of thing with their own set of files well let's just have everyone leverage that same uh, work and then everyone has the, the exact same so. great great question All right, so, so th that was really the, the changes uh, that we brought uh, for, th for those used to, to ARM and the way, the way it worked before with the, the personal lists. Um, but by and large, the, the functionality, uh, of course, is still there uh, to leverage the, uh, whether it's the, the favorites list here where you're filling in a description of, of what is occurring in the trial, leveraging that, that master list, that common, vocabulary that, that ARM offers. So everyone is, is using that same list um, and really bringing that favorites to it. You're not searching through the, the huge list of everything every time saying, all right, there's a small set that I typically use um, and let me look um, through that. So maybe just to look at that here, since, we're, since we've been working with assessment data, uh, maybe looking at like the, the rating type. Of course, when I want to choose a rating type, um, the, the list is quite lengthy, of course, for all the different types of assessments that, that are done. Obviously, that is a very uh, large list. So having the ability to uh, create a favorites once you select um, one that you use, here, let me cancel so I can, when I bring up that list, it'll bring me right to that count, plant count. Okay, this is one I use a lot. Let me add it to my favorites. So that way, next time I'm filling in an assessment, I'm looking at a much shorter list of what I've, I've used before. Uh, it's much easier to find. So that's a benefit just to save time looking at the list. And then as we saw a bit in the, the Air Mobile demonstration, um, these lists are brought with in, in Air Mobile. That, that part I'm kind of excited about just to see 
um, really bringing some of this information that you have in your ARM software that's always kind of been, been landlocked, if you will, into a Windows device somewhere. You know, just, just limited by that, that technology of that's where ARM lives. Um, it's not easy to port over to, to Apple. And even if it was, you know, you've got so much going on on the screen. You know, how are you going to get it into to more mobile devices? And so um, really ARM Mobile just bringing your favorites lists, um, really lightweight approach as far as you don't have some massive download. I can only imagine how long it would take to download ARM Mobile if we had to download the full rating type list and the full rating unit list. And you know, God help us if we had to bring all the list of, of past codes for, from Apple, it would, you know, it would be a nightmare. So um, that was really the thought is we can't, can't have all that overhead in, in a little app that, that you want to run on your phone. So uh, let's have the ARM software choose that limited view of what applies to your research. What applies to me? What applies to my trials? That's what I'll put in my list. So taking the code again, there's, there's a million pests, um, but I only have so many, oh, my pest list is empty somehow. Uh, let me just add a couple here. Not that I have any idea what these are, but um, I'll choose just these are the typical pests that I deal with. So that is what will be seen in, in the mobile app. We do, do have some flexibility. I don't think we showed that in the demonstration, uh, but if for some reason there, there is uh, a pest or crop would be probably less likely, but if there's a pest that isn't in your favorites list that you need to document when you're in the field, uh, when you're on the app, uh, you can freehand uh, and type in something. And then of course, once you bring the data back in, you'll want to connect that up with the list. Um, you know, if you know the pest code offhand, more power to you, then it'll connect up right automatically. But otherwise, at the very worst, you can, can jot down, have a freehand pest name, um, so that way the data will import, and, and then you can connect it back up with, with the list and, and update your favorites. I think we did show this with, with the AR mobile app. If you want to focus in on preparing lists specifically for the app, uh, the Connect Electronic Data Collector um, has this Edit Mobile Lists button. So we've kind of compiled together specifically what gets sent to the mobile app. Uh, so these are all the different lists. Um, most of them here are on that assessment section. Um, Maybe crops and pests, things like that too. Um, that's a, a great compilation of the list we're talking about that get involved in that app. Uh, and if you want to work on any one of them, you can edit the list and that'll bring up uh, your favorites list. And of course, then the full, uh, so you can always add more things to, to the favorites list. So kind of a, a batch approach, if you will, uh, specific to, to data collection lists, um, but a way, another, another route to take for kind of brushing up on, on the personal list that you have. And this does include, just to tie back with the last uh, discussion we had, this does include that SE definitions list. So the, the SE name, and we had our list of favorites um, those are there. That one we worked on today is there. So that does get sent to the app as well. All right, well, that's about all I have. or the lists and, and for SEs. We're not ran up right against the very end of our session like, like I normally am, normally longer winded, but uh, um, 
I guess that gives us time for, for any questions people might have. Anything you, you'd want to see, you know, kind of try to, to be general and vague, but if there's something specific, um, you have, have a little time for, for anything people may have. It, it is a lot to take in. And like I said, it's, it's kind of a challenge, especially with the standard evaluations of just uh, what, what to cover and what not to. Um, and it's really hard. It it's probably sounds worse than it really is when, when trying to train on it, because of course I don't have a simple example of, hey, we're all working today on a trial. Uh, we are, we're all doing this one trial so we can just you know, do something specific. I uh, kind of stuck in, in talking in generalities and, and that makes it seem, I think it makes it seem worse than it is. Um, at least those that, that have been able to implement it that I've kind of worked with it. Seem it's, it's easier to pick up once you're doing it yourself with, with your real trial, um, things can, can connect a little better, hopefully. So there's, it's usually, usually stunned silence. I'll put it that way. It's, it's not surprising after, after the SEs, uh, just trying to, to get a hold of, of that functionality. But again, you know, we, we kind of tried to keep tying back to the ARM mobile. Uh, that was the excuse for putting these features uh, kind of together. But by no way are these tools specific to that AR mobile. Uh, and, and really SEs, whether or not you're going to use a mobile app, I think can be really great. Uh, so a question here, kind of related to the AR mobile. Uh, if you're, you're using a subcontractor, um, can you restrict what they would see on the cloud? So the... I assume the scenario this this person maybe maybe doesn't even have ARM, um, but would just be somebody you would like to have them use ARM mobile, um, and, and say certainly would be a good way to to kind of limit that scope. Whether they're a stickler and kind of holding out, they don't want to buy the ARM mobile or whatever, or not ARM mobile, but don't want to buy the ARM software or whatever the backstory is. Um, I would say that. Here's my folder here. So this would really be kind of what they see. Um, if I just make up, here's, here's my A or mobile folder uh, where, where I am testing. Um, they, what you could do, and actually this, I should go up a level here. This is really the approach maybe you could take. So in my ARM, um, you know, I first created, when I first set up my EDC, I chose a path. Uh, there's no reason that you couldn't create different paths. And that's actually kind of what I've done here in this folder um, for just various people here in our office that we, that would be demonstrating our app is, is really what I've done in, in this specific case, but we could pretend these are my different um, subcontractors. Um, and so uh, perhaps Michelle has a set of trials that I'm working with her on. Uh, so I would, in her folder, set this AR mobile up and only export trial definitions that pertain to her. And so then I could, in, within my Dropbox, just share this folder with Michelle. And she would see only that folder with, with those uh, trials in them. And then when I'm working uh, with Kyle on his trials, I'll create this separate folder. I would connect, I would change my EDC path uh, to be that Kyle folder. Um, you know, in this case, I've got all the same trials because we're just demonstrating the, the same trials, but uh, he would have his own set of trials and would be able to just, just kind of manage the, the sharing within Dropbox. Then. That's a great question and, and really a great scenario. Um, just big picture. I've, I've really been excited with some of the questions I'm, I'm hearing with, with AR Mobile of, I think people are going to get very, uh, very creative with AR Mobile. I think just the way uh, the data is structured 
being very flexible. I think there'll be a lot of creativity in, in implementing things like that, using some subcontractors. Uh, now you don't have to get a messy, messy spreadsheet from them at the end of the year. You have to somehow figure out how to get into an ARM trial. They can be using ARM in some extent, um, even though they, they don't have the full software. Um, things like that, I think, will be awesome. Uh, just just to see how people how people use and um, you know if you start to try it out and wish that there was a way to do something a scenario like that uh, let us know whether it's, it's it's possible or it's something we can think about uh, creating in the future too it, it'll be it'll be great to see uh, as this thing gets rolling here um, at least I know in in the U.S. I think most of the Northern Hemisphere, things are starting to get going. Um, so it'll be great to see as it gets rolled out on what, what comes of it, so. Any other questions? Great, great discussion today. Um, appreciate the, uh, the attendance and and the questions, you know, this, this is all new. So uh, as, as I said last time too, feel free to reach out um, either, either to Melissa, for those of you in uh, Australia uh, or New Zealand or uh, wherever else, if, if you're watching re the recording later on, reach out to your representative and, and uh, just, just let us know what you're thinking and, and uh, see what'll fit. And, uh, whether or not you're using the mobile app, hopefully there was something today with between the SEs and lists uh, that can get you kind of motivated to, to try some out and, and standardize even a little further uh, with your ARM. So hope everyone has has a good Easter and and hopefully we'll be seeing you again at a, a webinar here soon. So thanks everybody.